Welcome to Sunday Prayers with the Stamford Methodist Circuit for the 14th of July. We begin with a prayer of approach written by Nick Fawcett. Let us pray. Sovereign God, we are here to worship you, having made a space in our lives to pause and reflect. We come to listen to your word and to ponder in the silence what you would say to us. We come to hear your voice and in the stillness to receive guidance. Open our eyes to your presence, our hearts to your love and our minds to your will. Direct our thoughts, enlarge our understanding and shape our lives so that we may live and work for you to the glory of your name. Amen. Our first hymn singing the faith 455 all my hope on god is founded is sung for us in a recording by the choral scholars of the church of st martin in the fields in trafalgar square london the video to accompany the music was produced by the melton mowbray church of england team
Let us pray. God, you have made known your purpose and called us to share in your plan. Before the foundation of the world, O God, you knew what you would have to do, for you took the risk of making a world of freedom where so many things could go wrong. But you knew that in the end it would all be worthwhile. You gave us the freedom to choose to worship you or to make our own gods, gods that divide and separate us, gods we think will serve us but who destroy us instead. From the very beginning you knew what you would have to do to save us. You knew that only your love could set us free again. So Jesus came to live with us and to die on a cross we made. But you raised him from death and exalted him above all the powers of heaven and earth, above all the gods we had made for ourselves. And now you have called us to share his life, to live through love in his presence, to experience that love which can unite all things and make the world anew. Thank you, O God, for all that you have done. Thank you, O God, for all you are doing still today. Thank you, O God, for all you will go on doing until your purpose is complete in and through your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's reading from the Hebrew Scriptures, the Christian Old Testament, is from Amos chapter 7 verses 7 to 15. It's read for us from the New International Version of the Bible by Sir David Suchet. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing by a wall that had been built true to plumb, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord asked me, What do you see, Amos? A plumb line, I replied. Then the Lord said, Look, I am setting a plumb line among my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. The high places of Isaac will be destroyed, and the sanctuaries of Israel will be ruined. With my sword I will rise against the house of Jeroboam. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos is raising a conspiracy against you in the very heart of Israel. The land cannot bear all his words, for this is what Amos is saying. Jeroboam will die by the sword, and Israel will surely go into exile, away from their native land. Then Amaziah said to Amos, Get out, you seer. Go back to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there, and do your prophesying there. Don't prophesy any more at Bethel, because this is the king's sanctuary and the temple of the kingdom. Amos answered Amaziah, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I was a shepherd and I also took care of sycamore fig trees. But the Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. The final few sentences of that reading remind us that Amos was an ordinary shepherd and farmer whom God called to be a prophet. Like so many of God's chosen prophets, Amos had tough messages to share with those around him especially those who claimed to be God's people and following God's ways. The message from God, for which Amos was the mouthpiece, was not what Amaziah the priest and King Jeroboam of Israel wanted to hear. Amaziah's response was to try to banish Amos from Israel to Judah. History is littered with the stories, and in some cases the blood of prophets who have been treated in similar ways. We shall hear about another one later in our time together, and as we do so, we shall be reminded that despite human opposition and persecution, God's word, God's way and God's will are never defeated. God always finds a way through. Let us pray. Almighty God, in a world gone mad with sound, where the still small voice has long been drowned out, raise up people with something to say and the power to say it, the men and women who will not be cowed by pomp or position or society's disapproval 
or incomprehension, but who will still speak out and say what needs to be said until at last they are heard. For prophets who persist, we give you thanks. For prophets who say the unsayable, we give you thanks. For prophets who challenge our complacency, we give you thanks. For prophets who keep reminding our godless world of your presence and power, we give you thanks. Where heart and mind and soul and conscience have gone deaf to need and injustice, cruelty and wrong, may prophets from you, O God, speak out and speak up until the time comes when your justice rolls down like the waters of a never failing stream. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We share a musical setting by Francesca La Rossa of some of the words from Psalm 85, which the Methodist Church Prayer Handbook recommends for today. The Gospel reading for this Sunday follows on from St Mark's account of Jesus being rejected in his hometown of Nazareth, following which St Mark's Gospel tells us that Jesus sent out his twelve closest followers in pairs to extend his mission. News of this reached King Herod, and our reading, beginning at Mark chapter 6 verse 14, picks things up at this point. Herod heard about this, for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said, He is Elijah. And still others claimed, He is a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. 
But when Herod heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to, because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time came. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. The king said to the girl, Ask me for anything you want, and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, Whatever you ask, I will give you, up to half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once, the girl hurried into the king with a request. I want you to give me, right now, the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guest, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison, and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. On hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. I'm going to share with you one half of an imaginary overheard conversation which links with that gospel reading. What do you mean, you chose me before I was born? I don't want to be chosen. I'm much happier as I am. Believe me, it really is much safer. I know truth is a fine thing, but in its place. Let it out in the wrong way and at the wrong time, and heads will roll. I mean, you might have asked before you chose me. You might have consulted and put the options in a simple way. I have no desire to be today's special, elegantly served on a plate. Find someone else for the entree, not me. I'm off the menu today and every day. Our next hymn is Singing the Faith 163. When Listening Prophets Dare to Speak. It was recorded by Joy and Ruth Everingham. When listening prophets dare to speak, love the
that bids us rise to speak and move like prophets on a lighted stage unmasking fear revealing love and making peace from age to I often feel powerless, Lord. We all do. We say so all the time. It feels like our usual condition in the world, corks on a tide. Often it's our excuse, and seldom does it convince us. But still we feel powerless, really powerless. Yet even powerlessness can choose whom it empowers. There is always a choice of masters, John chose, and in imprisoned powerlessness he spoke the painful, powerful truth. Or we can be Herods, mesmerised by truth, even painful truth, longing for courage to vote it to power. The truth shall set you free, but liberation is a terrifying thing. So John in chains was free, and Herod enthroned a captive. Like Herod, we listen and do not commit. We empower not truth, but our own captivity, our very own disempowerment. Fascination, blurred boundaries, compromise, and we too are bound fast by blurted hasty words. Somehow we missed the moment our pledge has been extracted. Show us the freedom we have, even in life's limitations, to embrace the truth, the power we have, even in our powerlessness, to refuse to yield to power. Show us the choice we have when other choices have run out, to choose the empowered powerlessness of the prophet over the finite power of the power brokers. We share the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is Singing the Faith 665, Make Us Your Prophets, Lord. We share it in a recording by Matt Beckingham. i
us pray. Lord God, as we journey through this week, help us to remember that you are with us in the ordinariness of our lives and that you want to use us, ordinary people, to speak your truth to your world. Bless us as we do that, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for sharing in this time of prayer, reflection and worship with me. God bless you.